Good morning, everyone. Welcome into our English service today. It's good to see all of you. From Psalms 135, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, you servants of the Lord. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Isn't it good that we can come to the house of the Lord today? And today we can worship Him and give Him the best. We welcome you and those also watching online. Let us all stand to worship the Lord. May the Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us let go, go to the, the house of the Lord. Lord. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the mighty Savior. Savior. God is spirit. We, we must worship, worship him in spirit and in truth. truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise, Praise the Lord the now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You, you are alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
thank you for your unfailing love, your precious blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood that flows from the cross, the blood that washes us clean, clean as white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done for us on that cross. Your death and resurrection give us hope and a future in heaven, a life everlasting. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
indeed we will never forget what you have done for each one of us in our own life that you have become our savior and lord that each one of us to be assured of what you have done on the cross so father help us not just uh, enjoy the blessing the eternal life that is given to us but let, lord help us to reach out to others as well so that they know what you have done for them in Jesus name amen let's uh, have read the Quran and pray Lord God our Father through our Savior Jesus Christ you have assured mankind of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. The first reading The first reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Philippians, chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others before yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let's all stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 45. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, beginning at verse 38. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with the generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the end of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. When the evil spirit comes out of a man, he goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then he said, I will return to the house I left. When he arrived, he found a house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Father, when you commit this time into your hand again, Lord, as we come to the word of God, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, that uh, give us understanding, as also the faith that in you, so that we can practice and put all your words into our life. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us from the elders to the youngest. All of us will understand and lay our hand on your word and I'll put it into practice just like, Lord, you say, it's a wise man for people who hear and put those into practice. Father, we commit this into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. I'm not quite sure whether in your life that you've ever been uh, challenge or people doubt about your identity. It's just that they know you for so well, all of a sudden they ask that you do something to prove that you are the one. Um, it, it's just like, you know, uh, asking, you know, Gordon Ramsay? I, I mean, I like Gordon Ramsay, not, not the way he swear, but I like his, the way he cook. Uh, he's uh, one of the best chefs in the world who has, uh, I think, 16 Michelin star. Today, if you want someone to prove that, it's just like asking Gordon Ramsay to cook a beef wellington to prove that he's a good cook. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. All Chinese will be, you probably will ask Wong Fei Hong uh, to kick the Mo Yen Kyok to prove that you are more Wong Fei Hong. This is a chapter whereby you see Matthew chapter 12, Jesus had that kind of, uh, had countered that kind of situation. In the beginning of Matthew chapter 12, basically the whole chapter is people who question because of the doubt, they challenge about Christ's identity. First, they challenge about uh, Him and the Sabbath. So Jesus got to prove that and not to prove anything, but then to mention to them, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Then follow, they challenge about His uh, uh, servanthood, because Jesus said that I'm the God's chosen servant. Then the next section is about, they even relate Jesus with the Baal Zabal, the Baal Zabal, with the Palestine who worship the God of the idols of Baal, the God of fly. So always relate with another names of Satan. So they also relate Jesus as working closely with the Satan to cast out demons. So Jesus got to explain to them, no, how can it be? Then after that, which we're going to look at from verse 38 to verse 40, uh, 45, that people ask him to give them another sign so that to prove that you are Christ, the Messiah. After all, they have spent so much time witness with their own eyes hear with their own ears about everything that Jesus had performed, the signs and wonders, and then all the teaching that Jesus had taught them in various occasions. Yet, these Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked him, Teacher, 
we want to see a sign from you. Just like what I mentioned to the one probably asked of Golden Ramsey or Wang Fei Hong. Now they ask Jesus, give us another sign. It's like to ask Jesus to prove that you are more Jesus in a way. <laughs> so Jesus had this encounter with them. Today, we're going to look at it with this title here, Jesus, the most amazing miracle. What else do you want? Basically, Jesus answered them in such a way. What else do you want? Because in our Christianity journey, as we believe in Jesus Christ, there are many questions that is really out of our boundary. It's just as someone to ask, can God build a rock that He cannot carry? That is not a question. That question shouldn't exit. Because it's not a matter of can or cannot or should or should not. It doesn't exit. You cannot ask God that question. It's not in His vocabulary. It's not in His dictionary. Neither is in Him. You know, there are a lot of questions that we cannot explain because it belongs to God. So this is the time whereby Jesus answered them. I think probably it's one of those time Jesus answered them sternly. It's not gentle, oh, okay, la, no, la, it's not like that. It's not. Jesus just answered them very sternly. We're going to look at two things today and hopefully by the end of this sermon, that our mindset will have a time, a paradigm shift that we are no more worried or scared about or even insecure about our eternity, our salvation. Because we believe uh, Christ, the Christ, the Messiah, the only Saviour, which is the true Saviour, that we do not need to doubt about. Amen. So I'm going to share with you these two things from here. First one, Jesus, the only saviour of life. Say to you, Jesus is the only saviour of your life. Amen. So here, what the Pharisees and teachers of the law say to him, like I mentioned just now, they want a sign. They want to see a sign. In the original text, actually, that one is that we willing, we are willing to see another sign from you. That's basically what they're trying to say. But Jesus answered them, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. Jesus used that because what happened to Jonah's story is very similar to Jesus Christ. A Gentile nation who are so wicked, also the same like this wicked and adulterous generation. Because you look at Jonah chapter 1, their wickedness at the people in the city of Nineveh, that, that uh, Assyrian, their wickedness come up before him in heaven. <laughs> there are only a few times where people in certain city, their wickedness reach heaven, Sodom and Gomorrah. And that few times alone, where God decided to wrap it up, to really destroy them, to send calamity on them. So this is the one of those in any way. So uh, God, of course, sent and chosen Jonah and sent him, but hey, he, he tried to run away. To cut the story short, he was swallowed by the huge fish. Not well. Uh. Last time in Sunday school, always well, because they put uh, the picture well. It's, not, it's just a huge fish. I'm not quite sure how big it is. But definitely it can swallow Jonah. And that inside that belly is a grave for Jonah. Three days in the belly. I'm not quite sure today if you cut the fish, sometimes you've got to smell the fish belly. Mm, smelly, not good. All right? We go to the wet market, we come out, we feel like, we smell like fish. How much more this guy, three days in the belly, considered die, considered a dead person. But then God 
use that fish to warm it out, warm it him out, go to the, sh- uh, the, the beach, and uh, probably that side which he reached nearly where he's supposed to preach three days, that shorter sermon in the Bible, 40 days more, nearly where will be overthrown. That's it. What a short sermon. But instead of walk three days to cover the whole city, just one day, after one day, the king to the least, even the animal, fast and repented before the Lord. And the Bible says God relented, like making a U-turn. He did not send, out, send down the calamity at that time. The people then at that particular time are sick. Only then you're in the book of their home, you see Nineveh still destroyed because their wickedness repeated again. But at that moment itself, because of they repented before the Lord, they are saved. So now they are one greater than Jonah, which is Jesus himself. It is not temporary. This saviour is not temporary. What happened in Jonah time, it's just temporary like that time. Soon after that, in Nahum, Nineveh still destroyed. But here, someone is greater than Jonah, which is Jesus himself. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That is is eternity. It's not like, okay, I believe in Christ this month, then next month, no more. This is what happened to me. Coming from an idol worship background, my formal gods taught me that I need to work very hard to reach heaven. Okay? Then, I also, the God also taught me that I need to be very bad, like the worst of the worst, for me to reach the 18, 18 levels of hell. So I was so struggled because I, I'm, I'm nowhere near heaven, neither I'm in the level 18 of hell. So I tried to get an answer. When I be, become Christian, I brought that kind of mindset to me. I got to work very hard to not just to gain, but to secure my salvation in order for me to go to heaven. Who knows? Next month, that God don't like me, then I cannot go to heaven. So I work very hard in order f- for me to secure, hey, I'm going to be there. But after I believe and I know about the truth, I don't need to work so hard because Jesus has paid all. None of us can do it with our own strength. If we can work so hard to gain salvation, then we don't need Jesus anymore. The fact that we need Jesus, Jesus has paid it all for us, once and for all, ransom for our sin. Because of Jesus Christ today, we have eternity. We have salvation. We are on the way to that heaven, uh, to that salvation, to that eternity. Amen. So, what Jesus is trying to say to them is that I am greater than Jonah. What happened to Jonah? That sign itself, most likely I think they had read that story. The people then, at least for the teachers and the Pharisees, they know very well about Jonah's story reaching the needy way. But now in, your, in front of you, there's one greater than Jonah, which is Jesus himself. So we shouldn't doubt about... Uh, I cannot use the, the word ability because that is not the word to describe our God. We cannot say God can or God cannot. It shouldn't be there because our God is beyond description. <laughs> when you put or those what you call earthly standard to describe God, then we pull God down to our level. That it shouldn't be happened. It cannot. Okay? So it, it just, it's just that when we doubt about God or about Jesus Christ, don't even doubt about our salvation. Indirectly, we are doubting and putting Him, actually, not doubt, to putting Him down, to put that standard on God. Amen? So we, we, we cannot. So here in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, verse 24. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited, accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourself know. 
This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of the wicked man, which is the Romans, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it is, was impossible of death to keep its hold on him. Amen. This our God, the Jesus that we believe. In John chapter 10, I will introduce to you to uh, three out of the seven famous I am to enhance this point about salvation and also guidance. First of all, John chapter 10, verse 7 to verse 10. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever come came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Say with me together. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen. This is the Christ that we believe in. He is the gate. Whoever go through this gate will have eternal life in another way. Will be saved. Not only will we see going out, coming in, will find pasture. It is not just inside the fence, outside the fence as well. We will not be worried, not to be worried about what to have in our life. God will provide for us because of Jesus Christ. And furthermore, here we did not, we do not need to go through a life that is like being still, uh, stolen, or killed, or destroyed. But we will have a life, life that is to the full. Another version will be abundant, overflow. This is our life. Unless that we truly believe Christ in the full. Not a single doubt like the teachers and the Pharisees to ask for another sign to prove that Christ is more Christ. No. But today, because we believe, we need to uphold and hold on to that belief that not a single time that you should doubt about Christ. Amen. The one that gives us life, life that is abundant. The life, the one that becomes the gate for us to go through so that we will find pasture in and out. That is our life. Amen. Today, if you think that, how come I did not experience those? It's time for you at this moment to really find Christ again. Christ, I mean, God has promised to us He will not leave us, will not forsake us. But the thing is, sometimes we choose our own way and get lost from what God had prepared for us. Just in case we are lost, it's not too late for us to find that path again. Go back to Christ. Amen? Now the second is that about guidance. Jesus, the only guidance of life. In the book of Mark and the Luke, the Gospel of Luke, he didn't really mention about the King of Sheba or King of the South. It's just about the sign of Jonah. But here in Matthew, Matthew had recorded in chapter 12, verse 42, the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Same thing will happen, what happened to Jonah, to the generation, and the same thing will happen to queen of south as, as well. Judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she, she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now one greater than Solomon is here about guidance. If you look at first king, after Sheba, king of Sheba, uh, queen Sheba, uh, I would say challenge to find out. Solomon proved it all to him, uh, to her. And the Bible say he was, she was overwhelmed. You do not have much about queen Sheba, but somehow it was used by Jesus. I believe this is about guidance. 
that we can find guidance in Christ. Christ will show us the way. Jesus will show us the way. If you follow Jesus, then we will follow the way, the right way of life. We don't need to get lost. We don't need to struggle. Because whoever walk in this way, surely it's a good way. The best, in fact. So here in John chapter 14, I introduce to you another I am. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you will know, you would, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know Him and have seen Him. Amen. Jesus said, I am, which is no option, no A, B, C. It's I am. There's the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So this is the thing. Sometimes in guidance of life, we want to have more option. Especially the option that we have in Jesus seems like a bit delayed. You pray and then things didn't come immediately. You are standing at the crossroad. You know everything that Jesus is going to lead you. But somehow you, are, you stood at the crossroad for so long. After so many days, after so many months, you still struggle. Which should I choose? This way, this way, this way, or this way? A few days ago, I, I, I need to find a T-shirt in a, in a shop in uh, Alam Masra. A T-shirt to design and ready for 60th anniversary. So the first time I drove, I take that road to Alam Masra. The last time was during CCEA, 2019. Uh, uh, it's not actually driving, it's actually following the escort at night, coming down from Rasar, Rasaria. It's so dark, basically we just following the you just follow the but I, I didn't really know. What I heard is that there's very chaotic, the construction going on, very massive, haywire. So I got to depend on the ways. So I turn on the ways. Uh, I know where to go to Alam Masar, but then after hearing all this, I turn on the ways. I try to follow the ways. But then the ways show me through Lintas, Tualam Bypass, all the way up, slightly before uh, Institute Sinalan, that Jalan Rampayan, cutting through not the Kampung Angkasa, where the Angkasa. Uh, apartment, no, further down. So it's very far, cutting through there and then coming down from Sulaman. No, the, the McDonald's there, Sulaman McDonald. Coming, uh, what is it? McDonald's, Kanaki, yeah, coming down from there and go to Alam Masra. I was like, it's so ridiculous, so far. So my understanding is that I choose this way. Going down from the town all the way to uh, Tanjung Lipat and uh, Yasan Sabah and go to Ala Masra. This is my way. <laughs> the way that I think is shorter and nearer and faster. So the moment I turn down to this Golden Hill roundabout, the way still ask me to turn back. I say, no. Literally, I say, no. How come? I mean, what happened to ways? They still show me to, uh, I thought they're going to direct me to the new way. They still ask me to go back. I say, no. Not like really shouting, like, but I say no. So pass through this roundabout and then go through the, the roundabout before Queen, before the tunnel. Then before reaching the roundabout, they asked me to do a U-turn also. I said no. Then going past through the tunnel, reaching the, the, the roundabout to Simbulan and uh, Tanjung Aru, he still asked me to I say no. So I was so stubborn. And I still believe to my way, I go to the town. Until Shell Plaza, that roundabout in front of Bandaran. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Only then, they direct me to the my way. Nah, see? I say, nah. The only then, I say, okay. So I go to Tanjung Lipa all the way, past Likas, past Yasan Saba, past uh, Kingfisher. Then somehow I saw Putrajaya, mini Putrajaya. 
and Alam Musma is mania. But then the, because of the construction happening, all you know, this flyover, halfway done, half flyover, all this sign, all this drum, all this barrel, and then, the then I saw a signboard, U turn. Oh, that's it, because see, Alam Musma, this U turn must be it. The moment I go to the U turn, oh, I'm wrong. Because after I turned the U turn, I said, wait, Alam Musma, Alam Musma is at my back. I took an early U-turn, a very big mistake. So I got to travel down all the way to Yasan Saba PPNS again to make another roundabout U-turn. I had no choice to follow the ways. And then I got to go up, not, I've been past last time Angasa, before, Ang, after one Borneo, that traffic light, you can make the U-turn now even further down. Then I take the U-turn back, only then I reach Alam I said, wow, Yen Wong Lu or there, Yen Wong Lu. I should have taken the Dolan Pai Pass Rampayan and I just so smooth for me to get to Alam Masma. I think God sent Jesus and prepared a lot of sign for us. In fact, Jesus only said, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One is enough. You follow Jesus Christ, you don't need to worry, I have should have more. Can I have three? Uh? Why Christians so boring, only have one way one? We should have few more. Just in case this one cannot, it doesn't happen, then I can follow. No, just follow Jesus, it's enough. You follow this way, for sure, you will get to heaven. You will get to the Father. Amen. Not only that, another I am in John chapter 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. And this is another I am. As we walk this path, sometimes, I'm not saying that after you follow Jesus, nothing will happen. Man. Just smooth sailing, if fun function, you go to heaven for sure. Somehow along the way, you have this up and down roller coaster. Some off road, like just a lot of pit hole, like Sabah Road. Like that. It's okay. Jesus is the light. He will shine. Even though you see a lot of pit hole there, He will show you the way that you don't need to walk in the darkness. In fact, darkness is not exit. It's just because there's no light there. This from psychology. Darkness is not exit in this world. It's just because there's no light. Darkness somehow is happened. Today, if you continue to walk in the light, which is Jesus' light, Himself as a light, we will have the direction, a very clear direction. So that's why some people, when they come to me, cannot be lost. Oh. I say, why? I don't know which way should I choose. What decisions should I make? If your relationship with the Lord is good, if you are still walking in that light, if you still follow that way, if you are still using that same gate, you will not have this struggle to make decision. Very quickly, you know what is the will of God. Very quickly, you know what is the heartbeat of God. What are the things that I should make and it rightful to the Lord? What are the things that I shouldn't make which is against the Lord? All this, if we get close to God, we will know. Amen. So this guidance is now looking at if Queen Shima can find that guidance and Jesus said they will rise up to bring judgment and condemn this wicked generation. How much more Jesus is the ultimate one. Amen. So find that way you find your life. You find the direction. And you don't need to struggle about, hey, how are, after this, how are, there. If we really get through and get close, 
to God, following Jesus in that way, lah, as a disciple of Christ, all these questions shouldn't happen in our life. Amen. Because it's quite serious, if I show you the end result of this wicked generation, some Bible translation, they divide or separate that verse 43 to verse 45 in Matthew chapter 12. But actually it's the same. What happened is that in verse 45 at the end, Jesus said, this is how it will be with this wicked generation. Which wicked generation? The wicked and the adulterous generation which Jesus had mentioned in the beginning in verse 38 when they asked for the sign. So this is a situation, the conditions of this group of people. In verse 43, when an impure spirit came out of a person, he goes through and places seeking uh, rest and does not find it. Then he said, I will return to the house I left. When it arrived, it find the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put it in order. Then he goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and then go in and live there. And the final condition of this person is worse than the first. And this is how it will be with this wicked generation. What wicked? Unbelief. It's not like wicked, wicked, kill and murder and uh, destroy and so on. It's just because they do not believe and they not accept Christ as the Messiah. They rejected Him. They, not, they rejected Him simply because they... I mean, Jesus do a lot of things that against their tradition, against their laws. And because of that unbelief, Jesus said this will happen to them. Israel, the Jews, God chosen people. Up to today, God still hold on to that covenant. Very strange. I asked the same question in my, in my class. I asked my lecturer. My lecturer said, wait until you go to heaven, you ask God. Because you cannot explain. It just belonged to God. God had chosen them. Some of us play fun and uh, try to joke around. God should have chosen the, uh, the, the Chinese. See, Chinese very faithful, uh, very hardworking. Uh. But my lecturer said, cannot. If you choose the Chinese, uh, then they will, not, they will not be seen. Because the moment Adam sees the snake, he will eat it. Either yok choy or just grill. These are the things you cannot explain. It just belongs to God. But what can happen is that if they choose on that way, this will be their condition. When Jesus has scolded them, they are just like the empty tomb. Outside, beautiful. Inside, just a set of skeleton. Nothing. Dirty. Empty. So what's happened is that this group of people, they are empty inside. Then this evil spirit, which God actually had delivered, will come back again, bring another seven person condition will be worse than before. I want you to show you to compare to Romans chapter 1, which this one, if you get to your Bible study this week, you'll be able to see this verse. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. You have a Bible, turn with me to Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Let me show you if the person who are empty and they keep the wrong thing inside their life, what kind of things it will be. Verse 28. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind. The original text, depraved mind in the keep. God gave them, God kind of, after so much teaching and confrontation and warning and so on, if we still want to do it, by all means. <laughs> if I translate, I will say by all means. You can keep it. The original text is to do, they keep the depraved mind so they do what ought not to be done. What kind of thing? They have become filled, mean they keep, they fill with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, menace. They are gossip, slanderous, God haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, 
they not only continue to do these very things, but also to approve those who practice them. This is their condition. I hope none of us will choose instead of to keep and let the Holy Spirit fill us, let the Word of God fill us, let His will direct us, then to choose to have this kind of life, to have a depraved mind. Don't. Jesus has provided. He Himself has become the guarantor that we have, can have a life. Life is much better than the wicked and the adulterous generation. I hope today we can choose life, choose a proper life, a life that is in Christ. Look at Him, look at us. Wasn't that we are the biggest miracle also? I mean, I don't know you coming from a kind of that kind of background. Even be, after I believe, I mean, become Christian, I mean, my life was transformed. My friend also mocked me. Huh? <laughs> you become a Christian? They cannot understand that I stopped swelling, I stopped gambling, I stopped a lot of bad things. So when I look back on all these year, those years, uh, formal years before I become Christian, it is a miracle that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for me so that when I believe in Him, I have eternal life. I do not need to perish. All of us have that same opportunity. Regardless, you are coming from a Christian family, you're born as a Christian, or you became, you become Christian for so many years, or just happened, now you are still deciding whether I should receive Christ or not. Today will be the opportunity for you, either for us to receive Him as a Saviour, or to rely ourselves to get back to that path, that tracks, and continue to follow Christ. What is yours? May I ask you to close your eyes? I want to send this invitation to all of you. We don't need to look at others or to check on others. Oh, that one, uh, that one wants to receive it. No. All of us can close our eyes, even the children that are upstairs. You can also, eh? even though probably you miss a major part, most of the sermon, but this is an invitation also for you, children. Today, after listening to this, somehow your heart, uh, prompting so hard, your heartbeat, you know something is going on. God is trying to tell you that you need Him. That your life there's still a lot of empty space that need to be filled by His Spirit. You know the best of your condition right now. This invitation is for you. Today, if you want to receive Christ as your Saviour, the first time ever, probably you say, oh, I'm born from the Christian family. But you have Never make this prayer to invite Jesus into your life as the Savior of your life and the Lord of your life. If you have never done that, this will be the opportunity for you. This is an invitation for you. Later, I will come to three. If you want to accept and receive Jesus as your Savior, the Lord of your life, you just, just raise up your hand. I will pray for you. The second invitation is that after hearing the sermon today, you feel that, yes, the spiritual condition is just like verse 43, that person is so empty. After I was cleansed, I was delivered, I was free, but it's so empty. I still feel that emptiness in my life. There's, there's nothing going on. I, I also feel that I not go further I need direction I need that abundance 
I need that light. If that is you, the second invitation also for you. So as I count to three, who want to accept the first invitation and the second invitation, just kindly raise up your hand. Very quickly, I saw it, then you can put it down. For sure, I will show you, but then you need to raise up your hand. Okay? So I count to three, you can start raising your hand, then I will pray for you. Amen? One, two, three. Yes, yes, I saw your hand, you can put down. Yes, any more? Any more? Yes, I saw, I saw your hand. Uh, I see your hands, sister, brothers. Anyone else? Children? Your teacher is up there, it's okay. You just raise up your hand. Don't worry, huh? You can raise up your hand. We will pray for you. Anyone else? One more. One last time. All right, I will pray. For those of you who have raised up your hands, I will pray for you. And after the service, you want to seek for more clarification. You want to know more. You want to get like getting into this life. I want to have a more solid and also uh, to continue to walk in this path. I need someone to direct me, to guide me. Uh, please come to some of our leaders or you can just wait at the lobby. There will be people to come and support you, to talk to you, okay, to, to, to help you. But let me pray for you at this moment and take this as a prayer for you personally. Father, I thank you for the sermon. Thank you for your words that today again, I hear that assurance of faith, assurance of my salvation, that knowing that there's no other way but Jesus alone. Lord, I thank you because I have been trying so hard to secure to find that guarantee so that I can continue to have this way to salvation but today Lord I want to open my heart again to accept you to invite you to enter to my life to be my saviour to be my Lord Father fill me Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that my life will not need to go to any more emptiness but always filled with the Holy Spirit. Always filled with your words. Always filled with your will that my life will be full of guidance and directions and full of destiny and purpose. Father, I pray, help me a lot to strengthen my faith that I will continue to walk with you as your disciple. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Say to your neighbor again, Jesus is your only Savior. Amen. Now we're going to witness people who give them life and gone through some training and then they are firm Today, they want to stand in front of the congregation to, uh, we now, uh, to, 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 declare, <laughs> to declare their faith that they are Christian, they believe in Christ. Uh, so let us all witness together for us. Uh, two of them, actually, are going to be baptized. Uh, always a great joy to see people to give their life to be baptized and enter into the family of God. Amen. Again, as usual, some of the prayer that we will, will require not only them to, to respond, but it will be good for us to, to reaffirm our allegiance to the Lord by, uh, again, to recite or also to declare the baptism vow. Okay? So some of the prayer, you can join in to uh, respond together. Amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered death on the cross and rose again from the dead for the salvation of mankind. 
Baptism is the outward sign by which we receive for ourselves what He has done for us. We are united with Him in His death. We are granted the forgiveness of sins. We are raised with Christ to new life in the Spirit. Those of you who have come for baptism must affirm your allegiance to Christ and your rejections to, of all that is evil. Amen? So therefore, I ask you these questions. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce the devil and all his works, the empty show and the glory of the world, with all the covetous desire of it, and the carnal desire of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your Son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water that your servant uh, who are washed in it may be made one with Christ in His death and in His resurrection to be cleansed and delivered from all sins. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to bring them to new birth in the family of your church and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty, authority and power are yours now and forever. Amen. You must now declare before God and His church the Christian faith into which you are to be baptized and in which you will live and grow. So do you believe and trust in God and Father who made the world? I believe and trust in you. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, as your Saviour, the Lord? I believe and trust in you. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? I believe and trust in you. And this is the faith of the church. Amen. Wong Ka. Oh, Wong Yim Wan. Okay, Wong Yim Wan. Okay. Wong Yim Wan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I sign you with the cross. The sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue to his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. Amen. 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 Wong Ka Ne. Okay? Wong Ka Ne, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified together. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, the devil and continue his faithful soldier, his servant, to the end of your life. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's now pray and uh, receive them uh, into the church. Amen. God has received you by baptism into the church together. We welcome you into the lost family. We are members together in the body of Christ. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We are yet to the kingdom of God. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. We should take a photo. 
uh, together with the witness. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Always a great joy to witness someone to uh, baptize, to be baptized in the church. We hope to have more. So the church is uh, having baptism every three months. So we work ahead of time uh, to get ourselves that you can attend the baptism class uh, from the discipleship training. And then you are ready. Then the next three months, which is uh, coming, which is on uh, September, there will be another baptism. Then in Christmas, on the Christmas day, there will be another baptism. Amen? Now, first of all, I want to welcome all of us. Uh, just want to welcome any one of you are first time worshipping with us. If you are first time worshipping with us, just wave your hand. I want to welcome you. Yeah? Your family there. Okay? Thank you. Yeah? Anyone else? Huh? All right, let's welcome them. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Now, I want to highlight to you some of the announcements from the bulletin. Of course, the highlight itself will be the 60th anniversary. Okay, other than that, you see the transfer of the priest, also the announcement from the synod. You'll be able to find it in the bulletin. I uh, just want to, to look at the bulletin, some of the, as we the transfer of the priest, so that next time, who knows? If you go to that, Church, hey, you say, hey, why the, the priest is not around? Actually, the priest already transferred to another place. So always take note of that as we make the announcement. You should look at the transfer list from the bulletin. Now, I want to highlight to you from the diocesan 60th anniversary. Uh, some of you probably still remember 10 years ago, we celebrated that 50th anniversary, the Jubilee in Magellan. Okay, that was like 10 years ago. After all, all the things that's happening around, but still, we put things together and celebrated that 50th anniversary 10 years ago. Now, we're coming to this 60th anniversary. Now, because of the, the nature of it, so what we uh, do is that to get everyone to involve, um, we will have the 24th July, um, which is the actual date for the 60th anniversary since 1962. Okay? So on that day, instead of Waiting for a day to get everyone from the diocese to come together, I think that is almost impossible. So what we do is that we do it locally. On the parish level, on the local church level, we will have our own celebration. But also, of course, listen to Archbishop Sermon. So he will preach to us throughout the diocese. So what happened is that because uh, of the nature of the celebration, we will have Chinese and English combined service. Uh, so overflow will be go to the, 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 the hall. Okay? We'll start at 8 o'clock. After that, we will have breakfast for everyone. A celebration. Uh, okay? Then the BM will start at 10.30 and with lunch. So that is the arrangement. Please take note on the 24th of July only. On that Sunday, it will be our diocesan 60th anniversary Thanksgiving service. You need to be here to witness together, to be part of the 60th anniversary. Amen? And then, because of that, in conjunction with that, we also uh, launched what we call the 60th anniversary T-shirt. This T-shirt comes with navy blue and also white colour. Uh, white, not colour, white. Okay? You cannot see clearly here, but then what you can do is that later on in the lobby, you can go to the counter, you need to place the order. If you can place the order by today, latest by next Sunday, then the order, when the order comes in, 
will send it, you will be able to get your T-shirt on the 24th. So on the 24th of July, we will wear the six-year anniversary T-shirt together. Yeah? So you can choose navy blue or white, with collar or round neck. The, the texture is between cotton and dry fit. Because if I choose dry fit, some of the older will feel like, no, you know, ayah. The dry fit one, when you hit like something, it will stick your body. If I choose cotton, then the younger gen, wow, why so old? This is for uh, uncle one. Cotton one. So thank God, God gave me a solution by finding this texture. It's called mini bird eyes. It's not cotton, it's not so cotton, and also not so dry fit. It's just suitable for everyone. Amen? And we get a very good deal. The round neck with design, only 22 ringgit. Because that brand is Carino. By buying their t shirt, it will cost you easily 30 ringgit and above. Okay? Wrong neck, 22. We call her 25. Go and place your order. We have all the measurements there. I will be wearing 3XL. That's why I choose this shop because got my size on. <laughs> Seriously. Many of the camp and conference are, you go there, no, my, no, no size are very sad. Everyone I'm wearing the camp t-shirt, I cannot. If I wear it, it will be very ugly. So this one got... Actually, I can wear two XL. What I'm trying to say is that you look at me, you roughly will know the size is there. Uh, we go all the measurement is there. We have the measurement, custom-made measurement tab. You see S, then you, you, you see XS. All there. You'll be able to measure it, place your order today. If you, don't want to, you want to pay later, it's okay, but order need to be in first. So that we can get it done before 24th of July. Amen? Later on, please go and do it. So hopefully by 24th of July, all of us will wear the same, uh, either navy blue or white here as we celebrate the 60th anniversary. Amen? Of course, the grand dinner will be on the 31st of August, which we cannot get everyone in. We have 49 churches throughout the diocese, urban, rural, parish, non-parish status and mission churches, 49. So everyone will take two up, it's full already, and plus the guests and so on. So we can only allow uh, like two tables. Extra will be another table, three tables maximum, like for churches like Gusen. So not everyone can go, but then 24th of July, everyone can come and remember and celebrate that 60th anniversary. Amen? Okay? So the next... Uh, uh, announcement, please take note from the bulletin that uh, uh, we will uh, again to remember, uh, get involved and pray. Of course, today will be the last announcement of the plan of marriage between Liana and also Peter. Then uh, they're going to get married in this, this coming Saturday. Pray for them. Eh? I look also looking forward for that. Eh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this. This is, this is it, this is it, okay? So let's all remember them. Uh, you can also come and witness uh, on that sat uh, this coming Saturday on the, on the 3rd of July, at 10 o'clock in the morning here. We will witness together uh, the wedding ceremony between uh, Peter and also Liana. Let's all pray. Let us come to the, to the Lord with a spirit of intercession together. We want to give praise and thanks to God for He will never leave us nor forsake us and thus we need not to be afraid nor be discouraged after also hearing the sermon that when we are assured of our salvation He also promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank God for who He is that He is the God and only God the only Savior of our life. We think of our own church, we pray that as disciples of Christ, ir irrespective or regardless of our circumstances we face, we remain assured that God is always there for us, and indeed, He is always there for us, no matter what we are going through in our life at this moment. Lord, we thank You 
that you never leave us nor forsake us, even what we are going through. We also pray for those who are baptized today, for the uh, English congregation, for the two sisters and the six uh, people in the BM congregation. Father, we do pray for them that they will continue to be faithful and loyal as soldiers and servants of Christ. Be with them as they continue their journey with you in their life, in you together. Now we pray for our diocese for the 60th anniversary. We are praying for four churches each Sunday. First one is Kota Marudu Anglican Church, the Reverend uh, Milan, Milintas Bin Madaut. And then the second one is St. Barnabas Tambilidon Pitas, Reverend Maradin Kampong. The third one is Ascension Church Papa, Reverend Mastery Raimi. The last one is in Ranau, St. Paul's Church, under Reverend Johnny Mailulu, Mailuhu. And also he's in charge of the Gregia Roma Kebun in Kundazan. We remember these four churches at this time. We give thanks to the Lord for these semi-urban churches who have been ministering in the respective locality, bearing the light for Jesus. We thank the Lord for all those who have come to know Jesus through their faithful witness. We also pray for the missionary distinctive and will continue to be evident in all their ministry, reaching out to many who have not known Jesus yet. Yes, Lord, we pray again for the raising up of local ministers and leaders through various equipment programs and ATI e-courses so that all these churches will have an impact in the community, businesses, schools, government, departments and offices, farms and in the village, in the village themselves. We will also pray that we raise up more intercessors and prayer altars so that consistent intercession will be lifted up to usher in transformation of lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, last of all, we do pray for protection over the fruits of ministry in these churches as they continue faithfully to preach the gospel in relevant uh, manners to their respective contexts. Yes, Lord, we want to speak blessing into the lives of the clergy there in the four churches that we have mentioned, the evangelists, the PCC, the staff and leaders, and all their families and also the people there. So, Lord, we commit all these four churches into your loving hands, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's say the concluding prayer together. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of our Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The laws of God, hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater commandment than this. Together, Lord, have mercy upon us and write these laws into our hearts. We beseech you. Amen. The confession. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men together. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we repent and are truly sorry for our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you, and deliver you from all sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life. Amen. May I invite you to stand. Now that we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. So we, mu we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us greet each other with the peace. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Want to encourage all of us. Uh, now we are not using the offering bag yet. Uh, we're still using the offering box boxes. There are one in front, one also up front here. So when you give the offering here, you can give uh, when the, on the way you come in or give before the Holy Communion. That's why we will have Alpha Tree prayer only after the Holy Communion. So please take note to want to encourage all of us to be faithful and also give cheerfully to the Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let, let, get, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and now we give you thanks because you have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing these hymns to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. All glory to you, our heavenly Father, for in, you, for in your tender mercy you give you only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. We made there a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all, as one sacrifice of himself, he instituted and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, and remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and give thanks. He broke it and gave it to this to his disciple, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Bring this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together we proclaim, Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Blessed are those who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. The gifts of God, of the people of God, drawn here with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine 
and the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Open the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Open the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Open the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Open the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life.
Let's pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power and glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us in a time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. May I invite you to stand as we receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind and knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ, Christ. Amen. Amen. has ended uh, after a silent prayer you may leave have a blessed week